This is Chris with Packet Pioneer, and welcome to this video about when is a packet capture appliance necessary. I think we all know that when we install a software-based packet analysis tool on a laptop, that that laptop has a limitation. There is a point in time when it will begin to drop packets. The question is, what is that threshold? At what point, what utilization level should I worry about needing purpose-built hardware for packet collection? And this is an important thing to consider because now more than ever before, every packet counts. When we're getting in and looking at an application that's performing poorly or maybe suffering disconnections in a data center, it's important that we get a complete picture of every packet between those clients and those servers. Now in most data centers today, we're running 1, 10, 40, even 100 gig interfaces. So we're definitely at that point when we're exceeding the traffic collection capabilities of most laptops. Now I know for myself, it can get very difficult when we're looking at trace files when there's missing data, when there's previous packet cannot be displayed, and it can be difficult to know if this was a problem in the way the trace file was actually captured or if that packet loss was real. So because of that, when we go in to capture an event, we want to make sure that we get every packet possible to get the true picture of the problem that's happening. So now we come to this key question. When does a laptop start dropping packets? This is a question that I've definitely been asked by my clients. And they're interested in knowing at what point do they need packet capture hardware. So in this video, what we're going to do is fire traffic at a laptop. And we're going to see at what point does that laptop begin to drop the traffic stream. Now let me show you my lab configuration that we're going to use for this demonstration. First, we have two purpose-built hardware analyzers. OptiView XGs from NetScout. The one on the left, this is our traffic generation source. Now we have this OptiView connected into a second OptiView. That's going to be capture point A. But capture point A is set in pass-through mode or inline mode. All traffic coming in port A is being mirrored out port B. Now not only are we able to forward traffic at line rate, but we're also able to capture traffic at line rate at capture point A. Then we have a standard laptop connected directly into capture point A. So these two capture points, A and B, are receiving exactly the same data stream. What we can do is we can compare to make sure that the traffic we expect to see at capture point B is really being first collected at capture point A. Now capture point B, it's a 16 gigs of RAM, i7 quad core processor, a well-resourced machine for packet collection. So let's go ahead and see at what point does this laptop begin to drop packets. So first, let's take a look at the traffic source. This is the originating OptiView that's sending the traffic to both capture point A and capture point B. Now here we're on the generate button. Now the generate button allows us to send several different flavors of traffic, if you will. And we're going to do some different tests to see uh, if one of these works better than the other in terms of packet collection. Over here for traffic, we're just going to select benign IP. We're going to come down here to the number of frames. We want to send exactly 100,000 frames. At what rate? We're going to come over here to utilization. We're going to bring that slider all the way up to 100% utilization. Our frame size is going to be 213 bytes to start. That's a good average packet rate. Uh, we could increase that if we wanted to benchmark further, but for now, we'll just start with that. We can see down at the bottom we're connected in at gigabit full duplex. Now this screen is capture point A. Now we're over here on the capture button on this OptiView XG. This is where we can see down at the bottom that we are connected in pass-through mode. So we're passing this traffic through at one gigabit per second full duplex. When we click start capture, we're going to be able to collect everything that's coming in from the traffic source. And finally, we have a copy of Wireshark. And this is how we're going to collect the traffic for, for capture point B. Now the type of traffic that I'm going to be sending to these two analyzers is the multicast setting. I'm going to come over to Wireshark first. Let's go ahead and start that capture. Continue without saving. And I'm going to come here to the OptiView XG and start capture as well. And we want to keep our eye down here on the bottom. We can see how many packets are coming in to capture point A. All right, so we can see two packets just came in, three, and both of the analyzers are synchronized. If we come back here to our traffic source, let's go ahead and say start. We have 100% utilization. We're sending 100,000 frames. Let's see how many packets are collected by the laptop. All right, it just went out in 186 milliseconds. If we come over here, 
we can go ahead and stop our copy of Wireshark. And we can see here by the packet count down here at the bottom that we collected 52,407 packets. If we take a look at the OptiView XG, it captured 100,000 packets. So we can see clearly that this laptop barely kept up with 50% of the traffic stream. And this was with multicast traffic. So this wasn't traffic that the NIC card had to bring in and process, but rather this was just traffic that existed on the wire and the driver should have been able to keep up with it. Now, while we're at it, let's go ahead and try another setting. If I come over here to all devices, the traffic generator can send out traffic to a broadcast MAC address. So let's go ahead and see how this changes things. If I come over here to Wireshark, let's go ahead and start another capture. And I come to the OptiView, stop and restart my capture. And we're set on broadcast over here. So let's go ahead and say start. Let's see how many come in over here. Whoa, quite a, <laughs> quite a few less, isn't it? We only got just over 8,000 packets at gigabit line rate when these are broadcasts. So we had 92% packet loss at the analyzer. Now, what did the OptiView see? I'll go ahead and stop this. Sure enough, the OptiView saw all 100,000 frames. So this shows us that the laptop certainly is not able to keep up with a stream of traffic It's if it's at one gigabit line rate. Now this is true, I've, I've tested this several times, it's true if it's single destination, multicast, broadcast, uh, this well illustrates the point, it simply can't do it. But let's turn down the volume so to speak, let's say at what point we can start to capture all these packets. I'm going to scroll down here and bring us down to 10% utilization. Now mathematically, 10% utilization of a 1 gig interface fully loaded would be 100 megabits per second. So let's start there and see how the laptop does at that line rate. I'm going to come over here to multicast. And instead of sending broadcast traffic that the laptop is going to have to process, that the NIC is going to have to actually grind through every single packet, let's keep it at multicast. So we're going to come here to, to first of all, to start our analyzers. I'm going to say continue without saving. I'm going to start our OptiView. And then let's come over here to start traffic. All right, so our traffic went out. It took about 1.86 seconds to put that those packets out there on the wire. Come over here to Wireshark, and sure enough, 96,000 packets. So even at 100 megabits per second, the laptop still isn't able to capture everything, and that's with a multicast destination MAC address. So let's keep turning down the volume. I'm going to go from 10 down to, let's say, 5% utilization. So now we're at 50 megabits per second, or right around there. So if I come over to Wireshark, let's start it up again. And the OptiView, let's clear out our buffer. Start over. And let's start our traffic. This is going to take almost four seconds to put these packets on the wire. If I come over here to Wireshark, we almost got there. 99,000, almost 99,800 packets, just about. So we're not there yet, even at 5% utilization. So let's keep turning this down. Let's go down to two and a half. So two and a half, that represents 25 megabits per second. Okay, so come over here to Wireshark. Let's start this over. OptiView. And our traffic. Now this will take about seven and a half seconds to put all those packets on the wire. If we take a look at our copy of Wireshark here, we just made it. There's our 100,000 packets that we put out on the wire. Now this is 100,001 because we probably had an ARP or something up above. But we can see we finally were able to keep up with the traffic stream. But here's the catch. I'm going to start my capture, stop my capture here, sorry. I'm going to come over to the OptiView as well and do the same. So here we saw it took down a 2.5% utilization just to get all of our traffic. But here's the problem. And this is another reason why we would want to consider getting hardware-based uh, packet analysis tools. If we come here and take a look at the delta times, 
Now this is a, uh, a column that I add to Wireshark anytime I'm doing packet analysis. And what that shows us is the amount of time between packets. If you notice here, we have varying numbers. So in some cases we have zero. Some cases we have 214. This would be, if we mentally move that decimal point over a few places, 214 microseconds, one microsecond, 362 microseconds. If I scroll up, we can see that these numbers, uh, there, there's an interesting pattern here. Now this shows us the rate at which the laptop is processing packets into that buffer. We can see it's simply not able to do it in a consistent way. Now let's contrast this with what the OptiView captured. So we did see all the packets, but these timers, the way they were timestamped as they came in, might not reflect what was real when the traffic was actually sent out. Now with the OptiView, we have the option of either opening them directly with the ClearSight Analyzer, or we can just say save packet capture data to file to open them up with Wireshark. Okay, so let me bring this in. This is the trace file taken from the perspective of the OptiView. The one on the right here, just like to line these up. So the one in the back is from the laptop. The one in the front is from the OptiView. Now look at the delta time. The one from the OptiView is like a clock. That's 74 microseconds, 720 nanoseconds. The OptiView is able to stamp it all the way down to that nanosecond granularity. But here's what's interesting. If I take a look at one of these packets, I'm actually going to filter just to make sure that I only see those 100,000 packets from the OptiView. If I select one of them and I come down to the protocol ID field, if I right click that and I'm going to say apply as filter selected, what that will do is just absolutely ensure that I'm only seeing, we can see it down here, those 100,000 packets from the OptiView. Now what I'm going to do is sort on the delta time. What I want to see is how much variation do I have in delta times, the amount of time between packets from the start all the way to finish. Now I want to see this 74, just like a clock. If I scroll down that delta time, I can see that these packets are exactly separated in time, 74 microseconds. There was just a few nanoseconds of difference uh, between any two of these packets. Now let's compare that with what we saw at the laptop. I'm going to set that same filter. If I select one of these packets, if I open up the IP header, let's come down to the protocol ID field. I'm going to right click. I'm going to come to apply as filter selected. So what that will do is it'll set a filter and only show me my 100,000 packets coming in from my traffic source. I'm going to do the same thing. If I sort on the delta time. Now up at the top of this list, it's going to show me a lot of packets were time stamped with zero. That means that they came in and they received the same time stamp as the packet previous to this. So this doesn't reflect what actually happened on the wire, as we can see with the OptiView. In fact, if we come down to the bottom of this list, we can see that there's several packets that had up to two milliseconds of delay between packets. If I select one of these and I return back to my normal list view, I can see that there's sometimes when I had packets that were time stamped down to the one second or one microsecond granularity, while in some cases the analyzer had to wait to process packets and the time stamping was incorrect. So this is another problem that we see when we're trying to capture packets with laptops. We just don't get those timers right. Now you might be thinking, oh, okay, what's the big deal with one millisecond? Well, this does turn into a big deal because it doesn't accurately show us the amount of network delay, application delay, client delay, server delay when we're looking at an application performance or an application disconnection. So here for this laptop, after we benchmarked it, we see that it can't do much more than 25 megabits per second to capture everything. And even at that, when it can capture everything, the timestamps are off. So for me, when I'm capturing traffic, I don't like to use laptops for this reason. It's unknown hardware, it's untested hardware. And a lot of times when I just have one opportunity to capture an event, I want to be sure that I do it right. I might not get another opportunity.
So for me personally, that's when I used the purpose-built hardware to do packet collection. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to comment or ask any questions. Also feel free to email me at chris at packetpioneer.com if you have any extra questions. Thank you for stopping by to watch this video.